How much time will it take us to get to Proxima Centauri? If we traveled in an F1 car, it would take us around 25 million 600 thousand million years, including stops. If we were to leave on a rocket at a constant speed of 25 miles per hour or 11.2 kilometers per second, the speed required to escape Earth's gravity we would arrive in about 113.730 years. Even at the fastest speed ever achieved by a human-made spacecraft, 364,620 miles per hour, or 163 kilometers per second by the Solar Parker probe at Perihelion, our journey will take a very long time, around 7,815 years. These are all rough estimates, but reaching Proxima Centauri would be more than just a matter of time, even if you're in space. With so much to see, boredom would probably set in sooner than you expected, and you'd find yourself in a metal cabin with always the same people, always the same faces. It would be extremely difficult to reach Proxima Centauri, mentally, logistically, and physically. Join us in watching this fascinating video to find out how long it would take us and what is the best approach to go to Proxima Centauri. You also learn what we might find once we arrive. Proxima Centauri is the nearest star to Earth, identified about 108 years ago in 1915. It is really one of three known stars in the Alpha Centauri system, along with Alpha Centauri A and B. Prior to this announcement, astronomers thought Alpha Centauri was the closest star to our solar system. This is a red dwarf, the most common form of star type in the Milky Way, faint and chilly. It is slightly older than the Sun, approximately 4.8 billion years, but has a smaller diameter and a surface temperature of about 2,725 degrees Celsius, as opposed to our star's 5,725 degrees Celsius. The star is approximately 25.6 trillion miles distant. This means that getting there would take an extremely long time. Even if we could travel at the speed of light, it would take us 4.244 years to get there. In actuality, moving at the speed of light is impossible since humans can only approach, not become, the speed of light. And it would necessitate massive amounts of fuel and energy, which are not currently available. Anyway, try to follow me here, we know that Proxima Centauri's position in the cosmos varies with time, just as the Sun revolves around the center of our galaxy with other stars. How can we know how much a star's position changes? The solution is correct motion. Proper motion refers to the movement of stars in relation to the observer on Earth. It is comparable to the movement of a star across the night sky. Proxima Centauri, for example, is expected to move at a rate of 3.8 arc seconds each year. This means that when viewed through a telescope, Proxima Centauri seems to move every year as seen from Earth. Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, is another example. It travels at a speed of 2.17 arc seconds each year. As a result, the stars in our galaxy are continually moving, and Proxima Centauri is no different. This implies that by the time we arrive, its location will have changed, affecting the time required to reach it with our fastest spaceship. By the way, here's an interesting fact about Proxima Centauri's proper motion. Its angular speed across the sky is relatively quick compared to considerably more distant background stars, since it is the nearest star to our Sun Proxima Centauri crossed in front of two background stars, that are on its course in 2014 and 2016. This provided scientists with once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to examine the bending of space caused by Proxima's gravity. This is known as gravitational lensing. The amount of bending might be used to compute the precise mass of Proxima Centauri, as well as to search for the star's gravitational footprint and any exoplanets around it. Unfortunately for scientists, they did not have the opportunity to observe any exoplanets because the chances of this happening were extremely low. However, the radial velocity approach was used to discover the planet Proxima b in 2016. It is most likely a rocky planet, with a recently revised minimum mass of as little as 1.17 Earth masses. Despite being nearly 20 times closer to its star than Earth is to the Sun, Proxima b receives comparable energy. This means that the surface temperature may encourage the presence of liquid water, if present, and so support the emergence of life. 
Currently, three planets are known to circle Proxima Centauri. This is critical for us since any proposed expedition to the star would almost certainly include the first close examination of an exoplanet. Isn't it incredible? Anyway, we recognize that it is impossible for a single individual to leave Earth and travel to this star in a single lifetime. Some bizarre research attempted to determine the smallest crew capable of maintaining a genetically healthy population over such long. To reach and perhaps settle the star, a crew of humans would need to finish a 6,300-year journey. This is the anticipated amount of time needed to reach the star with our current technology. According to researchers Frederick Murrin and Camille Balufi, at least 98 settlers, or 49 breeding couples, are required to maintain a genetically viable population over this long journey. The minimal crew size may alter depending on deep space fertility rates, probable radiation mutational effects, and other societal considerations. Expedition of this magnitude would be a hard task, but it has the potential to unlock humanity's ability to explore and inhabit the rest of the cosmos. So the question is, can we imagine and construct a spacecraft capable of hosting generations of humans? Some proponents of interstellar travel advocate sending spacecraft that are essentially miniature worlds, that can house travelers for centuries or longer. Generation spaceships are what they're called. The rationale behind a generation ship is straightforward. If you can't go quickly enough to another star system in a single lifetime, design a spacecraft large enough to carry everything you could need for a long journey. This would include ensuring that a spacecraft has a dependable propulsion engine capable of providing consistent thrust during acceleration and deceleration, as well as the essential amenities to support numerous generations of humans. Unmanned interstellar travel may become a possibility in our lifetime, despite the fact that we are still far from developing a functional, generation spaceship. A team of Australian National University ANU, scientists has designed a laser array that will help drive a fleet of tiny spacecraft known as nanoprobes to the distant star system, Alpha Centauri, which also contains Proxima Centauri. This type of spacecraft uses the well-known solar sail propulsion mechanism. The laser array will consist of millions of lasers positioned on Earth's surface and will produce 100 gigawatts of power. A journey to Alpha Centauri using photon propulsion would take between 20 and 30 years, compared to 100 generations if we used a regular propulsion method. The Australian National University is already working on the basic building blocks in a laboratory setting, and the journey might be ready by 2036, with Alpha Centauri in sight by 2060. This is a component of the Breakthrough Starshot project. It is a daring expedition that could lead us closer to unraveling the mysteries of our cosmos. Who knows, we might even catch a sight of Proxima b, a possibly habitable planet. So, here is to hoping that the ANU team can make interplanetary travel a reality. But what if we discovered a means to travel at light speed? Enter the Alcubierre warp drive. The Alcubierre warp drive is a potential technology that has been postulated in the study of theoretical physics. It would be capable of launching humans to the stars in a matter of days, making interplanetary travel a possibility. The Alcubierre warp drive, which is based on the concept of a warp field, works by disrupting the fabric of space-time with a propulsion system capable of traveling faster than the speed of light. An Alcubierre warp drive, when used, produces a bolt of energy that encircles the spacecraft. This bolt would force space-time to expand in front of the ship while contracting behind it, resulting in a bow wave. This would act as a cushion, allowing the ship to travel faster than the speed of light without violating any physical constraints. In theory, an Alcubierre warp drive might travel to Proxima Centauri in a matter of days. However, this technology is still in its infancy. Scientists must yet figure out how to generate enough energy to create and sustain a warp field. Despite this, the concept of an Alcubierre warp drive has gained popularity in recent years, with experts all over the world working to figure out how to make this technology a reality. If scientists ever discover the secrets of the Alcubierre warp drive, it will transform the way we travel and study the cosmos, bringing us one step closer to realizing our ambition of reaching the stars. To summarize, given our existing technology, we would be unable to go to Proxima Centauri. 
To make this journey a reality, scientists would need to discover a technique to travel practically at the speed of light as well as build technologies to prevent the effects of interstellar travel. Until this happens, we may have to travel hundreds of thousands of years to reach the nearest star. Here is where the video ends, thank you for your time. Do you believe we'll ever get to Proxima Centauri? Let us know in the comments section below, and we'll see you on the channel again soon.